Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So today I've got another tutorial for you where I'm gonna show you how to write an Ethereum smart contract in your browser step by step. All right, so before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And as always, if you wanna learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you need to join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so the smart contract that we're going to build today is an Ethereum savings account. Okay, so basically what this smart contract is going to do is store some Ethereum cryptocurrency, some Ether, for a set amount of time, all right? And it won't let us withdraw this money from this savings account, from this smart contract until a specified date, all right? It'll be locked up, no one can touch it, and no one else can withdraw it. We'll only be able to withdraw it until uh, it's actually mature, okay? And this actually has a lot of different applications, a lot of different use cases in the real world. Uh, one really specific example is whenever you've, you know, promised to pay someone money after a set date, it allows you to put this money in a contract um, that's digital, right, on the blockchain, and this person won't be able to withdraw the money from the contract until that date, and, and you won't be able to take it away either, all right? You see this a lot with ICOs, like when new tokens are issued, new cryptocurrencies. Basically, they'll, you know, vest uh, tokens until a certain date, until they mature, right? I've done this for uh, other clients as well, where basically they want to launch a new cryptocurrency and give tokens to advisors or pre-sale investors or something like that, and they won't release the tokens until a specific date. So you can take the code we're talking about today and modify it for your own use um, to do something like that, right? So I'm going to show you the basics about how to create a savings account or a vesting strategy of some kind with a smart contract. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we do is declare the uh, version of the Solidity programming language. We're going to use version 0.5.1, all right? And I'm also using Remix, uh, right, the Solidity IDE online. You can head on over to remix.ethereum.org if you haven't already uh, to follow along with this tutorial. I've got several other videos in this series on how to use Remix to develop Ethereum smart contracts if you aren't familiar with how to do that, so check those out. All right, so I'm going to declare the contract like this, we'll say contract, we'll call it time lock. Okay. And I'm going to use uh, an open and close curly braces here. All right. And the first thing we want to do is, uh, you know, create the vesting um, strategy, right? So basically we want to be able to lock up some cryptocurrency in this smart contract for a specific person, okay? And we need two pieces of information, right? We need, uh, you know, who can withdraw and how much can they withdraw, all right? So we need these two pieces of information in order to create this savings account or this time lock, okay? And we can uh, add both of those inside the smart contract uh, constructor. So what does that mean? The smart contract constructor is a function that's going to get run whenever the smart contract is put on the blockchain, right? And we declare it like this, constructor, all right? And we can pass in some arguments, right? We can tell it, you know, who uh, can withdraw these funds, like who is this savings account for, and how much can they actually withdraw, right? So we also want to tell it when can they withdraw, all right? So who can, how much, and when, because we don't want them to do it after, sorry, before a certain date. So we'll do that like this. We'll say uh, address, and this is going to be the beneficiary. This is the person that uh, will receive the funds whenever they're released, all right? And then we can also say uh, the release time. Say so you went 256, release time. All right, and we want to declare the constructor public. Okay, and inside this function, what we're gonna do is just set some uh, values to store this information, okay? We'll just say uh, beneficiary. Um, is equal to this. So I'll just copy this like this. Beneficiary um, is equal to beneficiary. Okay. So I'm using an underscore as a local variable. We're going to store it as a state variable like this, which we'll declare in a second. Okay. And I'll say uh, release time. All right. Copy this. Take this away. All right. So now what we want to do is store these values inside the smart contract. So the beneficiary will look like this. It'll be an address. We'll say address. Uh, 
I'll say beneficiary. Oopsies. I misspelled that. And we'll also say release time. All right, just like that. Okay, so now we can store these two values as state variables. So in case you're new around here with Solidity, um, Ethereum and Solidity allow you to store data on the blockchain inside of smart contracts with state variables, okay? And so basically, we have declared the data type for these state variables that's going to get stored on the blockchain. You know, an address is basically like a username and identifier for someone on the blockchain. That's what the beneficiary is going to be in this case. We're going to pass that value in to this smart contract constructor like this as a local variable with the underscore, right, beneficiary. And then we're going to store it to the state variable. So it's kind of like writing it to the blockchain database anytime this function is called and this function gets called whenever this smart contract is deployed to this blockchain so it's called once and only once okay same thing for release time basically release time is going to be uh, an unsigned integer right that just means a number without a minus sign in front of it um, and it's going to be expressed in seconds all right so how do you express time in seconds well, on the blockchain, we use uh, Unix timestamps, okay? So I'm going to refresh this page. You can go to unixtimestamp.com to find out the current Unix timestamp. And so this is basically uh, the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. Uh, this is also called epic time or you know unix time and this is just a timestamp that tells you what time it is right now in seconds you know since this specific point in history and that's the uh time that we use on the blockchain okay so there's some additional changes we need to make here uh well actually before i do that that tells you who can withdraw the funds you know who they go to the beneficiary um it tells you when with this timestamp we don't know how much right so the actual amount that we're going to uh, deploy is going to be sent in whenever we um, deploy the smart contract with the transaction itself. Okay, so we do that with some with some metadata. Basically, whenever we deploy the smart contract, we'll also be able to send ether. Um, with the transaction to the network whenever the smart contract is created and it's going to get stored inside the smart contract and I'll, I'll demonstrate that whenever I deploy it here momentarily okay so I'll take this off and there are a few modifications we need to make uh, the first one is that this address for the beneficiary needs to be made payable all right and that and the reason is um, that this person needs to receive the cryptocurrency and it's going to have a function where we can do this that i'll create in a minute uh, but it must be payable in order for them to receive the funds okay all right the next thing is that this person uh you know since they're payable we need to also use this address payable data type uh here so we'll say uh, let's see address payable and while we're here, I'm actually going to break this up to be more readable. Okay, I'm going to do a new line here. And do a new line here. And I'm going to um, add these extra like this. And move this down. This is just formatting the code so it's more easy to read and diff. All right. So after public, I'm going to put payable here. All right. And now we should be able to send an ether with this constructor transaction um, and it's going to store any value that we uh, send and whenever we release it it'll be able to be paid to this person well, we'll create that functionality in a minute but now we have the ability to actually do that okay so inside of here we want to additionally add some requirements we want to require that the release time is uh, in the future, all right? So we basically want to say that the release time is greater than now. So how do we do now? Well, we can do it with now and Solidity, but you can also use the block timestamp, all right? And that's going to basically uh, check for the current Unix timestamp of the current block, and it's going to compare it uh, with this release time and make sure that it, this release time is in the future. Uh, so we compare it against the block timestamp to do that, all right? So now let's actually create the function to withdraw from our time lock or our savings account to the beneficiary, right? The person who is going to receive the funds. We can create a new function like this, a function release, all right? And we'll call this public, all right? And inside of here, we will just say address, uh, beneficiary, and we'll say transfer, 
and address this dot balance. All right, so let me explain this. That was a whole lot of code on one line. So first, we um, take the beneficiary and we, you know, are explicit um, that it's an address here. Okay, we, we coerce it to an address. And then we call this transfer function, okay? And that basically sends uh, ether, all right, to this person, right? So we got this transfer function whenever we declare, declare this address payable. And we determine the amount that we want to send by checking the balance of the smart contract. Basically, any uh, ether that this smart contract holds, we want to transfer to the beneficiary, right? So we say address um, for this smart contract. That's what this is, okay? And we just check the balance. We take the full balance and we transfer it to the beneficiary, okay? So now we only want to be able to release these funds if they are mature, right? If the, uh, you know, if the release time is uh, in the past. So we can add a, a requirement here. Require um, that the block timestamp is greater than or equal to, sorry, greater than or equal to uh, the release time. All right, so that will check. So also about these requirements, um, if these fail, the function won't finish execution and it'll get a, uh, an error like we'll see below, okay? So I'm gonna put in the final code here just to make sure that we did everything correctly. And you can you know, pause the video and ensure that you have uh, this exact same code before you continue, all right? So there you go. All right, now that I've uh, finished that smart contract, I'm going to go ahead and deploy it. All right, so I'll just, you know, compile it first to make sure there's no warnings or errors, nothing so far. All right, so make sure we're going to use Solidity version 0.5.1. All right, done that. So let's run the smart contract. I'm going to choose, um, let's see here, the JavaScript virtual machine. All right, this is going to give us basically a uh, JavaScript blockchain running in our browser. It's going to be an Ethereum implementation in JavaScript, so we're still using the Ethereum blockchain, but it's uh, basically a fake blockchain just for development purposes. Okay, it's got several different accounts here. And I'm going to deploy it like this. Um, we want to actually send in some Ether, right? So we'll say uh, one Ether. All right, whenever we uh, deploy it, okay? And that's going to lock up one ether in this smart contract and we will only be able to release it whenever uh, it's mature, uh, whenever we call this release function, okay? So um, let's choose an account for the beneficiary, okay? Let's uh, actually choose, let's see, account number two. We'll just copy that address, all right? Copy like that. All right, so I've pasted this address inside this uh, deploy function, all right? So I've put it in, um, let's see here, quotation marks. I'm gonna put a comma, and now I'm gonna put the release time. So I'm gonna go back to this unix timestamp.com, uh, click refresh, and I'm gonna copy the uh, current timestamp, all right? And then I'm just gonna add, you know, maybe 10 or 15 seconds, just so that it's in the future, all right? And I'll just say, maybe I'll do 20 seconds total. All right, and now I'm going to go back to the first account in the list and I'm going to deploy it. All right, so deployment was successful. Let's try to release the funds, which shouldn't work. All right, all right, so we can see that it didn't work. Now we'll just wait for the timestamp to pass and I'll uh, try it again. All right, so let's just check it. Let's just check it. All right, so I think we've actually crossed our uh, time here. So I'll click release and there we go, it worked. Okay, so let's um, actually look here. We can see the second account in the list. This was the beneficiary. Um, it received the ether, right? It was the correct account. It wasn't, you know, some other account. And it wouldn't work before the actual release time. All right. So that is a successful smart contract. That's how easy it is to create your own, you know, uh, savings account or time lock or vesting contract on Ethereum with smart contracts, right? With the Solidity programming language. And this is something that you can do to, for your ICOs. You can do it for your own dApps. You can do it for anything where you need to lock money, lock cryptocurrency into a smart contract for a certain amount of time. You can also do this with Ethereum-based tokens like ERC-20 tokens, sorry, ERC-20 tokens, um, or really anything that allows uh, assets to be 
transferred from one party to another um, based on a certain amount of time. All right, so I hope you all like this video. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. If you want to learn how to become a highly paid blockchain developer, you can uh, join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.